We were talking this morning also about the pushback, and I'm seeing it particularly in the Australian newspaper today, a column by Chris Merritt, who does their legal analysis there. Pushing back now against the finding that was made by the High Court into its own former judge, Dyson Hayden, finding that he sexually harassed six of his legal associates. There are other stories being published today around that issue as well. But the column seems to suggest that the the findings of that investigation can't really be relied upon because it reached its decision without hearing one word from the former High Court judge. Just to clarify, he was, of course, invited to take part, but he declined. But he was denied procedural fairness because there was no op- uh, opportunity to cross-examine the accusers. Fran O'Brien is a retired QC, and before she retired, she was a leading employment barrister in this state. Fran O'Brien, good to talk to you. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Virginia. Is that a fair assertion, that if there's no cross-examination, uh, that therefore there's not been procedural fairness? Uh, um, I don't know where Chris Merritt gets his um, legal advice from, but natural justice consists of three things. The first is to know what the allegations are. The second is the opportunity to be heard. Um, And thirdly, that the decision maker is impartial. There's never been a right right to cross-examination, such as to give rise to a denial of natural justice in an administrative inquiry of this nature. Given what and I'm amazed and, and what that, you, that anybody would say so. Right. And or given that, what you know and what you've read about what uh, the Chief Justice Susan Kiefel did and the nature of that independent inquiry, does that seem to have been sound to you? Well, um, uh, Mr um, Hayden absented himself from the inquiry process. I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that he was told what the allegations were, either in writing or orally, and I have absolutely no doubt he was given um, opportunity to be heard, either in writing or orally, and I would have thought that 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 would have occurred probably on many occasions. I would have thought at least two, if not three, if not even more. Mm. Uh, When there is uh, a a person respond, uh, responding to allegations who are refusing to cooperate. I mean, uh, my experience is that the um, person adjudicating or decision, having to ultimately make the decisions, would give endless opportunities um, to the relevant person to say what they had to say. Uh, but if you upset, absent yourself from the process, you can't say you were denied natural justice. Just before That's I let you just go. a nonsense. Okay. Fran, before I let you go, do you reckon after your many years dealing with exactly these kind of issues and also um, as a senior lawyer, a, a barrister, do you reckon the law in Victoria has a Me Too problem? Um, I, think that, I think there might be at the federal level, but I think that now we've got a Chief Justice who's female at the federal level, at the highest level, uh, is a very good thing. That's why that's when these things start to uh, be dealt with. We've had female chief justice in Victoria for the better part of 20 years, and there is no doubt that the culture in that community, that legal community, is very different indeed to anything that's been described in this one. That's interesting. So it, it changes from the top down. Absolutely. It's about cultures. And the women judges, and once they get the opportunity to exercise power, will not just exercise pressure on their colleagues, they will impose penalties on their colleagues. And that's just what just Mr. Uh, Justice Carfield has done in this case, hasn't she? Fran, really good to chat to you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Fran O'Brien Bye. there, who's a, a well-known retired QC here in Victoria and who's worked in just can't, this kind of employment law for a long time. I want to talk to you also about the Dyson Hayden story. I know you've got that on your list this morning, Liz Lucan. Uh, The the winners for you are the six women who came forward. Well, more generally, I suppose the winners are women in the workplace to, you know, to see a really powerful person be held to account by six women. And, And some of them young and in their first years of their law career and some of them who then you know left their law career because of this 
alleged behaviour. So I feel like this is a, um, you know, a, a win for women in the workplace that sexual harassment is serious, that sexual harassment can happen to anybody, that sexual harassment uh, is still around, that any idea that the Me Too movement has come and gone and wasn't really all that serious, we kind of got to, you know, it's come back in our faces this week in a really, you know, kind of stark way. Somebody so powerful who clearly will allegedly um, got away with behaviour over such a long period of time. Mm. And to realise that women now do feel strong and powerful enough and to have, uh, not that they feel powerful, apologise for that, but that they do feel that they can raise these issues and that they will be taken seriously. So the last day or so I've heard a series of interviews of, of kind of older established female lawyers saying, well, yes, of course this happened to me 30 years ago. And and lots of us, of, you know, of a certain age say, well, of course this happened to us 30 years ago. I was receiving, and, receiving phone calls from blokes saying that they were just so shocked to hear this. And I was saying to them, why? Really? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted to, um, I mean, it's going to be quite interesting now because clearly the judge's lawyers are coming out um, and and there is uh, an attempt to undo the process by which these allegations have found to have substance um, and they're attacking the actual process. There wasn't a lawyer running it. Mm. He didn't have a chance to give his view. So attacking the process is what you do in a spin sense when you can't really attack the outcome. So you try and undo the process. That's right, which is what we're seeing today. Yeah, me, we're running out of time, so I just want to quickly hear from Simon on this. Simon, your view? I look at amazing work by the journalists and by the journalists always behind the scenes to get the story over the line in the first place. But great that it's being talked about. That's the, that's the best thing and um, uh, well done to those journalists.